Welcome to Park Media's round one coverage of the Spring Sling, presented by the Green Shed. I'm Zach James, and I'm joined by Dan Frost. Hey, Zach. Pleasure to be here. Uh, we're here on round one back nine coverage. We're out here banging chains and creating beer frames. State of scoring at the moment. We've got Dan leading the way on neg four, Austin neg one, Adam Rigby sitting on even, and Jeremy Finishes the front nine with a birdie, sitting at plus two. Uh, and let's hope that we can continue to push into the birdie territory. All right, hole number 10. Uh, we've got a par three presented by the Green Shed. It's 83 metres. This one's pretty just straight in front of you, to be honest. Um, I'd say this one, probably for the MPO players, would be classed as a must get. Right, leading us off here, we've got Jez after his birdie. On hold nine, a little bit early again. That one's probably inside the circle. Dan here, throwing a putter. Yeah, I'm throwing my black P1 that I've since donated to either a body of water or a stranger who came and picked it up. So I hope they're enjoying it. Let's pray for the second rather than the first. Rig. Ooh. Oh, no, I was looking kind of tasty for a second there. Maybe it's pushed just a little bit deep. It should be, should be great. Austin wasting no time. <laughs> and that looks basically parked. Great shot. Down up first. That's in the circle. Lovely putt. It's in the basket, mate. It's in the basket. Wasting no time. Uh, continuing the momentum from the front nine. Yeah, it's just a bit high. It's probably those nerves again that we mentioned in the front nine. Uh, first time on coverage. Speaking of, that's a pretty nervy putt from there for Rigby. He'd be disappointed with that one. The only thing that makes this hole not a complete gimme for the MPO boys is how exposed it is. And it was a little bit breezy uh, out in that area. So maybe that was affecting their putts. Yeah, for sure. I think we will see uh, in round two that pick up as well. On to hole number 11, presented by the ACT Disc of Club. Uh, we've got a par three. This is one of my most favorite holes, most favorite, one of my favorite holes on the course. Uh, basically because I'm a rider who likes throwing hyzers. Um, that's what you want to do. Push something out there, 100 meters, have it crash into these trees. Right, Dan letting us off. Going to go that, that route, hates it. I no, did hate I it. That's my that's my stable FD3, and I really thought I threw it inside, I guess, but managed to get to a pretty decent spot. Pretty you can throw a really it. good shot. You can throw a really good shot on this hole and, and not end up with anything, and you can throw a poor shot and, and scoop up in the basket. So you don't know until you get up there exactly where your disc is. Oh, here we go. I did see this in practice. Um, Jez going with the lefty hyzer out. In practice, he put it under the pin. That one looks maybe wow. a little bit short. We didn't even think to mando that. You can see there's quite a busy road on the left-hand side there, so if we had our time again, we might mando it. But fair play to him. Play, play to the rules. Looks like Rig and Austin maybe pushed a little bit straight. Um, we'll have putts, definitely, but a little bit obstructed, not ideal. Can't tell how close that was, but he looked about six or seven away. Oh, Austin about six or seven away. Great straddle putt. Don't talk to me about drops. Yelling at the tree there. Dan absolutely on a dime. Lovely putt as well. Jazz and Rig and will get up and down for their pars. Starting to see a little bit of separation from you at the top here, mate. Next six. Hole number 12, presented by the ACT Disc Golf Club. This one's a par four, 181 meters, and it, it does have a lot of OB left and a drop zone uh, with the Mando there as well. Essentially, you're looking to push out into the field and finish left, and then you've got a bit of a um, touchy downhill approach uh, to the pin leading the way, Dan. Looks like a, a hyzer from yourself. Oh, go, Yeah, just throwing a DD3, hoping you chew off a decent amount of distance camera doesn't show it but there is a tree on the right that does get in your head a little bit 
Um, you do feel a little bit squeezed by the Mando on the left and that tree on the right. Um, but Austin just making making it look easy, really. That has gone absolutely well. Austin getting out that flippy driver just for the extra bit of distance. You know it's camera and you see cyclists going past. Chez lining up what looks like a massive hyzer, but that's a flippy disc. It is nose up and stoorly though, and it pushes to a pretty good location to be honest. Oh yeah, really. Oh, there's that tree you're talking about. Oh uh, yeah. I was actually I was surprised to see Jez not go with a roller here. I think if the hole was reversed, I'd definitely be trying a roller because you could get all the way down the hill and have an eagle look. Uh, I'm not sure if roller is much in this game, but... I can, yeah, I can, I've I seen Jez throw a lot of rollers, actually. I'd say definitely in his game. Maybe so, he just uh, didn't think of it. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. This this gutter green starting to come into play a little bit there on Jez's approach. Let's see if you can navigate it. Ooh, a little bit of skip. That's gone a bit long. Yeah, I don't know who I'm kidding, thinking oh, maybe I could skip that in, or <laughs> why I'm going so aggressive there. It's really just an up and down for bed, but made it hard on myself, as I like to do. Austin really in a bit of cabbage, but um, far enough down there that he can basically just lay up the putt for the bird. Rick giving it a good go. Oh, good effort there by Jez. That putt's starting to look a little bit more comfortable as the round goes on, but he, he would be nailing that most of the time, you'd think. Oh, lovely putt, Dan. And he likes it. I'm not, I'm not going to jump that one. I'm not jump him twice in a round. Mate, that's fair. Austin here to tidy up. Lovely. That's a great looking putt. Austin's starting to string some start. birdies to, yeah, yeah, he, he bogeyed eight and nine, I think, so he's bounced back pretty well. Alrighty, on to hole number 13, presented by the Property Collective. We've got a par three here. I think there's probably, um, the, the whole map is showing two possible routes. I think that's very fair. You can either go around the backside with a forehand or a lefty hyzer, or you want to beat these trees uh, a little bit low and see if you can get it to skip up to the basket. Also getting all up in your space, mate. New strategy. It's got a quiet word in my ear, Ew. and it's affected me. <laughs> <laughs> Next level games from Chip. That's that um, low gap on the right, beating those trees I was talking about. Looks like both you and Austin just pushing that one a little bit too straight. Um, I'm in two minds about this one. I think either you want to throw something more stable, or you've just got to throw highs around the hand. Come on. Yeah, look. We will probably try and to park the hole as opposed to getting like the six meter putt if you just play it a little bit safer out to the left. So it's probably on us for being a little bit too cute with it. Yeah, it looks like Rigby's done the same thing, unfortunately. So Jez with the best, uh, the best shot on this one. Uh, the lefty line certainly favourable. In fact, um, a little bit of a shout out to uh, MA1 player Camille Abratansky actually aced this hole uh, in round one. Got a very similar shot to what Jez just threw, skipped it in, straight into the heart of the chains, walk away with the one. Well done, mate. And then what happened in round two? Oh, well, uh, spoilers for for that, but um, obviously we won't be seeing it. Hole two, I uh, sorry, round two on this exact same hole. It does the exact same shot. I'm on the card, actually. Um, and he throws the exact same shot, skips up into the pole, bounces out the back. Uh, tap in birdie, almost aced the same hole twice in two rounds. Mate, that is goodness. insane. Glad we didn't have an ace pot because we would have been completely out of This would have been him. Yeah, on to hole number 14, uh, presented by the Green Shed. We've got a par three. Um, this one, low ceiling off the tee, very much a left to right. Another lefty friendly hole or a righty forehand. I'm interested to see how you approach this one, Dan, because as someone uh, who also has a bit of a sketchy forehand, uh, this was no easy hole. Yes, yeah, so as we watch Jez with the lefty backhand, it is made for lefties, as you said. Um, for me, you know, not much of a forehand. I'm really just trying to throw something flippy and high and a little bit nose up to get out of that low ceiling and just turn as much as possible. Didn't do the best job. Uh, it's a pretty tricky birdie for me. 
Also with the low forehand. That's probably the ideal shot. Just clips that branch. Oh, that's rough. That looked that absolutely unlucky. humming. Yeah, absolutely. Rick a little bit high. A little bit um, a little bit offline for what he was aiming for. I'm not sure if he was trying to go the inside or the outside gap. I tend to just throw and hope. I'm sure he, with his skill he has an actual plan. That's a good run, Dan. Uh, just always going to be tricky with that little bit of ceiling. Good run from Jez there. Probably about 15 metres. Austin the closest here. That's probably outside the circle as well. Hate it out of the hand and just, yeah, dropped, dropped a bit low. So, a bit of a shout out everybody. for this. Yeah, a bit of a shout out for this hold. Wasn't birdied at all in round one. So, maybe people needed a bit of time to get used to it. Have the first crack at it and see how they go in round two. It is a very... We, we, don't, we won't see the, uh, the T angle because it is kind of a blind basket. Um, so, if it's your first time playing here, it's hard to know exactly the line to throw onto hole number 15 presented by TV Magic. We've got ourselves a par four here up against the uh, stormwater drain on the left. We've got a quite a straight, sort of right to left sloping tee shot. I would say definitely favors again a forehand or a lefty hyzer. Um, Mando up there on the right, just to avoid players throwing into the footpath. Jez up first on the box. Yeah. With that lefty hyzer. Throws it straight to the ground, but <laughs> gets away with it. Look at him, he Very knows it too. Nice. He knows it. <laughs> Dan, going the very aggressive line. I love that shot. Wow, that is an insane shot. So, just for full so, disclosure, that, that, was, that was only a mid. I'm not a madman throwing a driver on this hole like Austin. Well, going the outside flex forehand. I have not that ever thought about doing that, but wow. Huge. That is smoke. I don't think you can throw a better tee shot than that. Yeah, look at him. Yeah, yeah. He tells us which gap he was actually aiming for. <laughs> Freak forehand, yep. Ooh, that's a bit turned over. Hits a tree. You can actually hit a tree and roll into the stormwater drain, which is, is bad enough because it's OB, but it's also bad because it's a very deep stormwater drain. Awkward to get into just to rub salt into the wind. Hard to tell where that one got for Jez. Thank you to the tree there for blocking our view. We'll have to go and see uh, when he gets up there to putt. Rick can still attack from here, but um, it's certainly... Oh, as you mentioned. Straight certainly the has risk. That, that, <laughs> look, that was a very tough spot to be. It's hard to tell from the camera, but there is a huge wall of trees that he had to get through. I think he was being a little ambitious there but might have recovered to be able to save the bogey. we we'll have to wait and see. That's a great shot. That's going to be basically under the pin. That's how you draw it up as a back-end player. Um, I was throwing back-end on this one as well in this tournament, and it was tough. How's this for Eagle? Austin with the air bounce. He'll be very <laughs> disappointed. <at> the... <laughs> Can you tell he plays ultimate? The hat, uh, uh, the hat, the hat is almost off at this point. I put the nose it's, yeah, it's, it's tough out there. We're starting to reach full levels of tilt. Ooh, I thought that was it. Great effort there by Jez. Rig for the bogey save. Cut. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that is a... Rig. Yeah, yeah, there he is, the big rig. That's a, that's a great putt. Great way to uh, maintain your composure. That's where rounds can fall apart if things go wrong. Um, he's just That's he's such a rigby up. hole as well. <laughs> OB bogey with a huge putt. Mate. I don't know whether that's a compliment or an uh, insult, but we'll take it as a compliment, it's a, Rig. It's a, it's a statement of fact. Right. On to hole number 16 presented by the ACT Disc Golf Club. We've got a par three. Now this one, um, I don't know who made the, the map to indicate that you can go left off this tee. If you're an absolute madman who does not care about double bogeys, you can go that left gap. Well, Zach, it was actually me who made the map and that was after playing a few practice rounds with our right. dear president, Adam Stewart, who absolutely loves the left line. And I've seen him park it a few times as well. Well, I was not aware that I was slandering my co-commentator, but um, I stand by what I said. <laughs> we'll see what Jez does. Jez decides who's right. All right. 
Austin going the more traditional gap. I love that shot. That's skipping all the way up to absolutely hard. See how right now? He knows. It's always, it's always nice to see the fist bump and the smile. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, Jess. <laughs> you let Look, me he down. Hasn't, he hasn't vindicated me, but to be fair, I did say a forehand or a roller. So. Yeah. Regoing that right pushing highs as well. That's sawn off inside. It's got to sit down or it could skip oh, yeah. all the way OB. I've done that before. Sit. Oh, oh. Just sat down. Jez, a lot of his putts have come out a bit early. A bit short. Yeah, it's been a recurring theme for him. He's, he's battled well to, to come back from a very rough... Oh, Reek. Oh, wow. Never That's mind. Here he comes. Wowza. Such a rig, such a rig birdie as well. <laughs> you love to see it. it. Smiles all around. You love to see it. Pressure's on me after watching that. Yeah, big putt. Definitely in effect here. Ice in his veins. It's another big putt. That, that's a, that's a very good putting from you this round, Dan. Yeah, I don't think my tee shots have been Adam all that great. Adam getting the rig out. It's fairly well with the putter. Love to see the banter on the card. Boys having fun, even though they're out here competing. Love to see it. Jazz tidies up the par. Austin will get the absolute tap in. Oh, that's a quite the view of the purple short shorts. Hole number 17, presented by the Property Collective. We've got a par three, 90 meters. I'd say um, probably a hyzer flip up this middle gap will be the common play for our righty players. I'm interested to see how Jez approaches it, whether he tries to push something up the left gap or just throws a hyzer flip as well. What's this disc you've got in hand here, Dan? It looks like a, a rainy. Yeah, I think it's a rainy. Go for that hyzer like flip play. One. Yeah, yep. that's like my flippy one. The thing that's important here is to get enough height for it to carry. Oh, I love that. A little bit low. Yeah. Probably a bit I short. Love, I, I was going to say, I love that line with the mid. With the putter, maybe a little bit more oh, air required. Yeah. That looked like a glitch from Austin. I'm not sure that's still in the bag. <laughs> maybe you can see why. <laughs> I was going to say, where uh, is he throwing yeah. that thing? Not ideal. I think he's trying to lose it. That's so nice by Rig. That is absolutely perfect. Go in. Oh, it's gone long. Oh, man, that was saucy. You just, you're the, you're the, uh, the fist bump dealer here, Dan. Yeah, mate. Keep the vibes high. Yeah. Even when the pressure's on. Jez throwing a, a bit of a stand-up fairway, I think, there. Just going that left gap. I'm not sure how much is really there, but, um, Definitely a tricky, tricky gap. Gee, that was a good effort. Very good effort. You couldn't tell from his reaction, but Go. that was not fun. Oh, Ooh, cheers. Gee, we're, we're heating up here on the putting green. It's Just in time for hole 18. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no spoilers oh, no, on hole 18, but... Down. I let the you... team down with that one. Mate, you've got nine down at this stage. Consolidate. Rig! Oh, man. That was for three big putts in a row. Oh, it's, it's tough to see such a great... Just an absolute frozen rope of a drive. Oh, dear. Oh. Bit of a lapse of concentration there, I think, from Austin. Oh, and that one was right just, side. Just a quick shout-out. Every single person in MPO parred this hole in round one, except for Austin. Sorry, mate. Good on you, Aussie. Just, that's, that's a very common man move. Love to see it. He's got to keep in touch with the mortals. That's it. On to hole number 18. This one presented by the Green Shed. It is the hardest hole on the course. Hit this first gap if you can. A drop zone and a mando on the left side. Uh, once you get out there, you've got a nice 90, 85, 90 meter approach to a very tight green um, and an extremely elevated basket. What are you throwing here, Dan? I'm going a stable DD3. Ooh, threw it a bit high. That's, That's done pretty, pretty well to get out there. This, this, yeah, like yeah. you said, this hole is very tough. It's not because it's super long. It's, it's really this tee shot. 
Uh, the approach is no gimme, and then we, we've also done another comically high basket <laughs> at the end of the hole, so I can see why this is playing pretty hard. Yep. <laughs> Green does hit an early enough tree that I don't think the drop zone and the Mando are in play. Um, Jez, that looks absolutely great. Just hits that last tree. That was looking fantastic, though. Yeah, unfortunate. Austin going to forehand line with a bit of flip up. Smoke that one. A bit high, though. Does fight through to the second layer of trees off this gap. He will have a very obstructed approach. Rigby's aiming for Jade's ute down there. Good luck to... He's luckily uh, missed it. The camera there. We have absolutely no idea where that's ended up. Do you remember, Dan? Do you know where that is? Uh, let's say short left. Alright. That'll do. Jez has yes. a bit of an open look here, but he's got to get it to turn. Wow, that's pretty flippy, but not quite flippy enough, and that might be OB right. Yeah, yeah playing playing that um that shape is very risky, because the OB path right does come into play. Austin going for the flex forehand. Gets to that tree, probably about 40 short. We'll probably just lay up from there. Go. That's a great shot there by you, mate. That's a navigating a low ceiling, very touchy green. Puts that to six. Oh, it's going to feel like about 20 when I get up there and look up at the basket. Um, yeah, Rigby, Rigby holding on to that one a bit too long. Ooh, and it's actually gone OB, so that's not ideal. He will have a chance to make the putt, maybe from the top of that hill, but it's a scary one to make with this basket. Austin, you bad man. Just lay it up. <laughs> what, what is he doing running it from there? Now he's got an eight metre putt onto this. Oh, he doesn't miss those. He does not miss those. Yeah. I was going to say Rick's forehand reminding me of my own there with the wobs. Certainly a flappy, flappy forehand of mine. Rick. Ooh. Oh, that is tough to watch. That was a good part, just a touch low. You, you in the background there, Zach? That is me, mate. Oh, Watching on. Thank you, Austin, for covering me. Appreciate it. Great putt, Dan. Great hole. Fantastic round. Neck 10. Yeah, not too shabby. That's an understatement. Leading the way comfortably. Jez will get a bogey. Honestly, not the worst. Was that a double? For no, just a single. Rig gets the triple. That's a tough way to finish. Alrighty, let's look back on the scores heading into round two. Dan leading the way. Neg 10. Uh, Austin will be in second place, so a five-stroke gap. Austin finishing with neg five. Uh on the rest of the other boys on the card, bit of a struggle to finish. Jez finishing on plus two, sitting in fifth, and Rigby plus three, sitting in sixth. So that means we will have two new players for round two. Um, very excited to see what these boys can do in round two. Um, we'll see who joins us. See you there. Uh, and until next time, park it.